what if we could prevent homes from igniting and our communities from burning to destruction? Wildfires are inevitable. And so does this mean that wildland urban fire disasters are inevitable? And my answer to that is no. But you might be surprised based on your perception of how homes ignite during extreme wildfires. What is the general perception of how homes ignite? When we look at the evidence of the disasters, when we go and examine the evidence of the disasters, the typical pattern of destruction is total home destruction with unconsumed vegetation. What this scene indicates is that no walls of flame sweeping through communities occur and wildfires don't literally or figuratively explode houses in flames. This is what we see quite typically. The ignition of lofted burning embers from the extreme wildfire behavior and low intensity surface fire spreading to contact structure, either ignited burning embers or by directly igniting from the lofted burning embers. Wildfire spreads as a sequence of ignitions, not as a sweeping mass of flame. Typically extreme wildfires don't spread into communities. Embers are the principal initiating ignition mechanism within the community. So when we see the big flames and pay attention to the big flames, it's really the firebrands, the burning embers that are lofted out. And in this particular scene, the red rectangle around this house is the extent of what was burning. And that area, the home ignition zone or the HIZ. Extreme wildfire, fire suppression, fire control is not an option. Where we have a choice, if we define wildland urban fire as a home ignition problem, we can focus on making our homes ignition resistant during extreme wildfires and prevent ignitions. I first became aware of, of this zone in a publication. They called it the zone A as opposed to the ember resistant zone or the non combustible zone or zone zero, but the purpose was the same and the purpose was to prevent ignition from firebrands and direct exposure from flames. And so it's this zone you see near the home that um, provides a surface that, that is that should embers land there, they're not going to have a detrimental effect on your house. Uh, the question is, is whether the five foot uh, zone that, that has been um, uh, provided and guidance and whatnot uh, was, was adequate, was it too big, too small? So we conducted a number of experiments. You know, the, the way that wind blows around the building uh, does influence what the flames are gonna do with things that are close to the building. And so higher wind speeds, the, the, the flame does tend to point backwards. And so should that flame get to the home, it's gonna get there via a backing fire, uh, burning as a surface fire um, towards the building in combustible um, uh, fuels. At lower wind speeds, the, uh, the flames do uh, tend to bend towards the building. Um, and so that would be a more vulnerable uh, condition in, in this particular situation. A good summary uh, chart is shown here. Uh, colored uh, rectangles, whether they be dark green, light green, or red, um, are positions where the flaming um, items were. And the, the bottom line is that in most situations, five feet is, is a very conservative number. In, 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 min, in almost all situations, um, three feet is, would be adequate given the heat sources that we were using. So I think the other thing that, that be, has become clear in the research that, that I was involved with when I was working at IBHS was the need to incorporate uh, a vertical non-combustible zone, in essence, in conjunction with this horizontal zone that, that I just talked about. So you need to have this, this uh, zone, this vertical zone, in conjunction with or in addition to the horizontal zone. 
want to illustrate it and bring it to the practical level for homeowners, give you some tips, some ideas of what you can look for and how, how you can make changes around your home. The first five feet is really illustrated right here. We're talking about the surface, the ground, the area right around the outside walls of your house. We've learned that this zone zero, this first five feet is the most critical place for you to pay attention to. And what I like is that it's also the easiest place for homeowners to uh, take action. Most homes are gonna ignite from embers. This is a fantastic illustration of what those embers can do. In this case, in the, the forest or grasslands around a community, or embers falling from the sky and look back down when he swings the camera back down, look what's happened in the few seconds since they turned the camera to the sky. This is where we tie the home itself, the home hardening work that we want you all to do with zone zero in this area around the exterior of the house, that six inches closest to the ground. Our goal is to keep the fire from spreading from the ground to the structure itself. And as we've already covered mulch, your choice in mulch within five feet of the structure is absolutely critical. We want to see you choose rock or gravel mulch. One of the things that exists within five feet of a home is often a fence or a gate. As the fire travels along this fence, it's going to reach the house and it's going to ignite the house unless we've separated the fence from the house either by opening that gate. That's something we recommend uh, while a fire is burning nearby, if you haven't had time to retrofit your home with a non-combustible metal gate. I want people to think about the leaf litter that tends to build up in that zone zero. My favorite thing to point out to homeowners, and it's just the simple, common, combustible items. This is a simple fix. Uh, move this firewood indoors during the summertime. Uh, you can see so, some examples uh, of things that can get you in trouble here. Here are some, some juniper shrubs uh, planted in somebody's window box as we transition in the coming weeks to talking about uh, vegetation, landscaping choices. Uh, we're going to emphasize that certain plants really don't belong in the defensible space or in zone zero around a home and juniper is certainly one of them.